What is going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me as I take an overview of the Golden Age Marvel Comics Omnibus Volume 2. So please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Now before we get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us a copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus has been released already in the direct market and I believe it comes out soon in the book market. But it is here, and this is the Golden Age Marvel Comics Volume 2. And here's what the spine looks like. Then a closer look at the back. So collecting Marvel Mystery Comics 13 through 24, Volume 1 collected 1 through 12. It started as Marvel Comics, and then of course they changed the name to Marvel Mystery Comics. From out of the Golden Age, the comic book that started the Marvel Revolution. And so we even have the Timely Comics logo up here. And this is the standard edition cover that's available everywhere like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, wherever you want to get your Omnis. On the left is the direct market cover only available at places like GeographicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, and your local comic book shop. The book retails for $125 and has 832 pages. Okay, but before we look inside, this is pretty cool. So they have the logo here, the Timeless Comics logo back here too. And the spine there without the dust jacket. Okay, let's open it up here. We have this golden pages here for bookend. And here we have Golden Age Marvel Comics Omnibus Volume 2 with a picture, I believe that's Carl Burgos, if I'm not mistaken, of the Human Torch and Toro. The Table of Contents. And we also have, let's see, if, yep, The Wonderful Introductions by Roy Thomas. And of course, these are introductions that he did for the Marvel Masterworks. So before I go any further, these were already collected in three separate Marvel Masterworks. But here it is for the first time in omnibus format. And the Marvel Masterworks, for those not familiar, are a little bit smaller than this. They're the size of a standard size hardcover. So the size of a trade paperback or the trim size of a comic book. So. Here it is, we're kicking it off with the Human Torch story, and that is by Carl Burgos. And of course, this is the Human Torch from the Golden Age, the android Human Torch named Jim Hammond, not the Fantastic Four Human Torch. We have another story here from Bill Everett about the Submariner and his cousin, Dorma. And for some reason, he's dressed up like the, or at least to me, looks like the angel, the other character in this book. So, the Marvel comics, when they started out in the Golden Age, were a series of anthologies. And they're about 10 pages or so. Issue 13 introduces us to the Vision. Again, Golden Age Vision, completely different than the Vision that you're used to in the Avengers. And we also have Terry Vance, who's like a uh, Tintin kind of character. A kid that just solves mysteries. What kid didn't want to do that? Right, Encyclopedia Brown, is that one of those guys? I think he was. Electro, nothing to do, again, with the character from Spider-Man, but this robot creature right there, from the Age of Marvel. And here is the Angel, this is the character I was talking about, who fights monsters and characters like that, is not the mutant Warren Worthington III, but his name is, what is this, oh man, Thomas Holloway, I think? So it's just this age of golden age heroes. It's what this collects. And the adventures of Kazar the Great. Not Kazar the Savage. So this is David Rand. The character that first appeared. I think it was a pulp magazine if I'm not mistaken. And they carried over his stories to Marvel Comics Anthology. Because if you all remember when I did that episode. Or showcasing the Timely's Bill Everett Submariner Omnibus. A lot of those stories had, was, were printed in a little pamphlet format, and then they decided to bring it over to Marvel Comics. So, the anthology continues, and very much all of these issues right here, all of the 12 issues in here, have the exact same format. About 8 to 10 pages each. Human Torch and, uh, later on, Namor, I'm sorry, Submariner get a little more love. They get about 12 pages, sometimes 14 pages, especially when we get to issue 17 because it's a big crossover and I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but just showcasing some of the artwork. 
um, there, later on, about issue 20 or maybe 19, there's another little uh, story that's added to this, and his name is The Patriot, or the character's name is The Patriot. But this is what started it all. And something you're going to notice here in a second is that when these books, and you also have to realize when these books are printed, and I haven't read all the forwards by Roy Thomas, and I need to get on that because I wanted to start reading the stories. But when these stories were printed, it's when World War II was going on. And it was before the United States got involved. So it was really interesting to see the characters get involved first, you know, fighting Nazis, uh, fighting uh, Japanese warships. And that leads us to this issue right here. This is issue 17. And this is a big deal. Right, um, We saw a cover earlier, I think it was issue 15, of the Human Torch and the Submariner fighting. However, this is the second time that both of them have met and teamed up. Uh, the first time, it was a big, big deal right in the Golden Age. I'm sure if they had the internet, it would have been blowing up. With people speculating as to if they're going to fight again, who's going to win. But this time, you know, they fight briefly. But it's more of a team up and they go and of course fight you know the the enemies so they go and fight like i said a bunch of uh, german ships then they attack a bunch of the japanese warships so it's really interesting to see marvel comic book characters go into war before the united states did even though everybody was assuming that they were going to eventually that we were going to go to war so it is really cool to see that for the first time i've never read these issues. So I've always been interested to see how Marvel dealt with those events. Because Marvel is a company that has always been existing in the real world, right? I know it sounds ridiculous um, and silly, but, but it's true. Marvel characters have existed and lived in the real world. You could have a Marvel superhero living in your backyard. Okay, maybe not here in Kentucky unless his name is Cannonball. But Spider-Man, right? If you lived in New York, like, there were neighborhoods in New York that were in the comic book. So, it's always been really cool. That is an awesome Carl Burgos pinup of the Human Torch. Um, now, let's get here to the back. I did want to showcase just a little bit of the artwork from The Patriot. Yes, this character back here. Not to be confused with the Mel Gibson movie. But this guy right here it looks like a gladiator. So there are three introductions of Roy Thomas's uh, Marvel Masterworks reprinted in here. I think written in like 2008 or so. So they're a little outdated. And speaking of outdated, some of the things and images you're going to see in here are completely a product of its time. So keep that in mind. But I mean, it's all collected. They don't shy away. They don't they don't blur anything or they don't cut out panels. It's all in here. So for your pure comic historians. This is a perfect addition, and the masterworks have already been restored. As you can tell, the colors, some of the colors, I'm sure, had to be recolored to match the existing. Because I mean, who's going to have proofs of these books? The other interesting thing before we get to the back is during the publication, they make note of this. This is really cool, but also sad too, because nobody during this time in the 30s and the 40s was keeping tabs on who was writing what or who the artist was. So sometimes when you have like the Terry Vance story, you have the script by Ray Gill and then the art is unknown, right? Additional inks by unknown, inks by unknown, additional inks by unknown. It's all over the place because there wasn't, you didn't give credit to the artist very seldomly do you see somebody sign their piece of art. Sometimes the writers, what they would be like by Carl Burgos, right? But if you were an unknown artist, I'm sure you didn't get any credit back then. That's really sad. But it's cool that they were able to archive at least this much information, right? At one time, they wouldn't have had this many credits. Now, let's look in the back here for extras. Always freaked me out, by the way. The parrot. I don't know where I've seen that picture before. Uh, let's go back here. So you have house ads. There's posters too and pinups. Well, the pinups are in between the issues. And more house ads. There's also advertisements for Captain America and the other comics that they were publishing at the time. So you have the Masterworks reprinting right here. This is volume one. Masterworks volume two. And then you have the Golden Age cover in case you have the direct market cover. And you want to see what the standard edition cover. This is the one by Carrie Andrews, the one that we have. Then these golden pages towards the end. And that, as they say, is that. And you can purchase this from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com.
your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the contents, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been picking up the Golden Age Omnis. If you've skipped on the Timeless classics like the Submariner, the Human Torch, Captain America, and you're sticking with the Golden Age books like this, let me know all those comments down below. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. And more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.